This is a secret to knockout power. We have Phil DeRue over here, and he has come up, he's broken, yeah. That one, thankfully, I haven't been punched by him yet. He has broken down the secret to knockout power into several categories here. Building from the ground up, piece by piece, all coming together, how to knock the sh** out of someone. The objective overall, when you're talking about power in general, is we want to improve the ability to produce force as fast as possible, right? With high precision and technique. So before all of this, mobility, stability, strength, and power, you still have to develop the skill acquisition. You have to develop the technique and the precision and the timing to actually knock someone somebody out. So properly using kinetic linkage to improve the rate of force and power. We want to make sure that we're able to transfer load from the ground up and then also with rotation and torque to be able to produce that power into the opponent, right? And then also you need to have proper mobility to get to the range and you have to have tension upon impact. When you're talking about things that you can do inside the weight room or when you're training to increase that, mobility is going to be the first thing that you want to look at. And mobility of the hips is very important because that's going to help you rotate, right? So you can do things like hip airplanes, 90-90 glute bridge, adductor drawbacks, which we done the other day, which was really good to help with rotation, right? Internal, external rotation. That's, that's how you're going to be able to throw your punches, all right? Then mobility of the trunk, right? So you're looking at your T-spine, right? Your thoracic spine. Kettlebell half kneeling overhead rotation, right? That's gonna help you rotate through and then wall rotation reaches. So all this is gonna be good for the anterior and posterior oblique sling. Moving on over to stability. Now we talk about the support system, right? That's your feet and also your toes, right? Especially the big toe because when you rotate, you have to drive off of the big toe when you throw your punches. So we do things like heel toe raise, big toe taps, and short foot to grab the ground. Short foot? Short foot is gonna help you increase the intrinsic muscles of the feet. Then stability of the low back. We talked yesterday about mm -hmm. the joint by joint approach, right? So having a stiff or stable low back lumbar spine is also going to allow you when you go to throw your punch to stiffen up the trunk so that you have good stability to produce the force. Now, at that point, you gotta look at it like this. You can't shoot a cannon out of a canoe, right? So you have to have yeah. a battleship back there. Yeah. So we use cable punch anti-rotation techniques, dumbbell pull-throughs, and then also bird dog rows. I know you've done those before. Yeah. Okay, so those are some of the things that you can do from a special exercise perspective to increase your, your trunk stability. Now we move on to strength, right? Increasing force production. Right, this is gonna be strength in the lats, the triceps, the forearms, and even the glutes. So you can do things like banded push-up plus. That's gonna help with the serratus anterior. That's the puncher's muscle. Also, obviously, the anterior delts and the triceps. Bottoms up kettlebell arm bar. That's gonna help with shoulder stability and strength in the, in the uh, upper back. Neutral grip pull-ups. Again, an upper back strengthening exercise. You did those the other day, mm -hmm. right? And you wanna do those with fat grips, right? If you can, right? It's gonna help with the grip strength, right? It's also gonna protect your knuckles and your wrist, right? A lot of guys, when they can punch hard, sometimes maybe their wrists and their hand or their, their knuckles aren't prepared to do that and that's when they break their hand. All of this is good, but you also wanna work the foundational pattern. So whatever press, pull, squat, hinge, rotate, or lunge pattern that you can do is gonna be ideal to gain strength right. for your punching power. If you just cherry picked a couple of the, uh, the, the detail exercises out and just did those, I don't think you'd have the full package of power and you, you would still have a canoe. Yeah, you got to connect the dots. Right? right. So I'm just giving you the step-by-step -step process of what you would want to do. So it starts with mobility, stability. Then you need to improve on your strength as a baseline. Improve on all these patterns. Get them stronger. Get relative strength and then increase your absolute strength. That way you can take it over to power because if you look at the power equation, force times velocity. So you have to increase force and you have to increase your speed to improve your power production. And you can use explosive strength movements or power movements like box jumps, split stance, broad jumps, lateral jumps. That's that lateral force displacement is gonna be helpful. Mid ball tosses or throws with rotation 
or just a triple extension or even just a punch out throw and then landmine variations because I love landmines. Yeah. So these are Phil's ingredients to knock out power, but these are just ingredients and tools that can be used for other things. So I want to cherry pick a couple exercises here out of each category and let's see if we can get a little walk through on each. Is so that good? we're pressing up overhead, mm -hmm. keeping an eye on it. And you're going to take your hand, you're going to use this as lever, as a leverage to pull it to. Oh, I got you. So you're using the leverage of the kettlebell yep. to kind of like keep yourself from falling over. Good. Try not to, try not to crunch, right? So try to stay up by a little bit more. There you go. Push that in. Yeah, use that adductor too as well. Nice. It's a great stretch. It's a good stretch. The main problem I have is just like stability. Yeah. yeah. So is that part of the drill? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I was like, like I'm doing it wrong because I feel like I'm gonna fall over. Now you're working range of motion in the T-spine, right? We want to get that range, but we're also working stability in the hips and in the adductors, all of that. Yeah. Because that's gonna help with rotation. Yeah. The difference between uh, doing it without pulling your knee in and not is like you literally it. like when he when he tells me to do that and I push it in. It's just like all of a sudden another muscle group is getting stretched. Lifting this hip up and driving the elbow into the hip, staying tall. You'll feel a big stretch. Yeah! <laughs> God damn! Oh, that one's going in the exercise library. You could just sit there and be like, ah, oh, yeah, I feel it. But then if you really put intent to it, like you do most yeah. of the time, like you're gonna get more out of it. You squeeze this glute. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Reach back. Reach back? Yep, reach back. This way? Yeah, there you go. Oh yeah, it opens up the chest a bit. That's, look at this man's fist. That's, that's a good fist right there. That's a good knockout fist, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> and again, you're gonna rotate to the leg that's in front. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go from here, and we're just reaching. Keep rotating, keep rotating, keep rotating. Ooh, yeah. that's good. Bend that back knee a little bit more. There you go. Hold. Ooh, yeah. that's great. I feel like I'm stretching myself. Yeah. It's, it's weird, but sometimes you can get in stretches where the leverage, like, you feel like someone else is helping you when it's really just yourself. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you do reps with this or just yeah, like? Yeah, I would do like five to ten reps. You have to create torque. So we have to stabilize a joint by joint. Right. Right. It's like um, if I have a, a towel in my hand, if I don't clamp down one side of the towel, it's just going to spin. It's going to rotate. Right. But if I can clamp down the towel, I can create torque when I spin the opposite side. Here comes the foot stuff. <laughs> you got your only feet? Foot, foot fetish, yeah. What's your only feet's URL? <laughs> Believe it or not, even my fighters need to work their foot strength. And they also need to work their ability to move their toes mm -hmm. independently. Especially the big toe. Right. Yeah. Like, that's the biggest thing. Like, a lot of guys, they'll get, like, what we have, turf toe, or, like, you get stuck on the mat or something like that. And, they, and it's limiting their range of motion. It limits their mobility of their big toe. Mm -hmm. So that when they go to drive out, especially with like a shot, right? When they're going in for a takedown, like you've got to have the ability to get over the, the knee, over the toes. And sometimes it's not a fact of you having uh, mobility issues or the ability to get range. It's, a, it's like a neuromuscular inhibition where you can't really connect the, the dots. Okay. You can because we've already tried it. So what I want you to do is just keep all the little toes down yeah. and pick the big toe up and hold. Now for a lot of people, a lot of people can't do that, right? Yeah. They end up like uh, bringing up all their toes or they can barely pick their big toe up. Yeah. Now what I want to do is I want you to keep all the little toes down and I just want you to tap the big toe and bring it back up. Yep. And we would do like 10 reps of that, right? And believe it or not, it doesn't look like much, but a lot of people can't do that. And to make it harder, you drive the knee over the toe and then try to lift the big toes up. Oh, it's different. Yep. Oh, it's harder. See? Yeah. So you're, you're, again, when you bring it forward, you're shortening it up, and then you get a bigger stretch. You Same got time. meaty feet. I have pretty, pretty <laughs> meaty feet, yeah. <laughs> and, you're, and, and again, on top of that, like you, you move well, and you can see why you move well because you have a great support system, and obviously other things. Two to three sets, roughly five to 10 repetitions, just go to like near, near failure, then rest for about a minute or two, and then do it again. You guys, New Year's resolution should have been better toe strength. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that your lower back stability exercises all look to be unilateral and all seem to have some sort of rotation, anti-rotation involved. I think that a lot of people forget that a lot of lower back health and a lot of lower back like improvement comes from torque, twisting. Yeah. So you have the anti-rotation, but also rotation is important. 
I take a lot from Stuart McGill. So if you look at McGill 3, it, that's similar, right? But this is yeah. just a, like a progression towards that. So let's go do the cable anti or the punch anti rotation. But instead of punching and rotating out, I yeah. want you to maintain stability. So you're gonna be here, and you're gonna try to punch this further than this hand. Oh, okay. So you're using serratus. It's like a portrait, yeah. Yeah, you're protracting yeah. slightly using that serratus and then maintaining position. As you come back, don't let it pull you this way. Yeah. Right. So we're gonna be here, punching through, bringing it back, nice and controlled, and then punch through. Mm. Slow it down and reach, 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 reach. Slow, slow, slow. Matter of fact, we're gonna cable underneath your arm. I would have never figured it out. <clears throat> yeah, I feel it there. Not power. I want you to go nice and controlled all the way through. There you go. So all these muscles here are being turned on. When he goes to punch, that's what you're gonna need to turn the punch over. You can imagine like in some of these exercises, just to kind of like seal the deal, you have to kind of like think about where it's translating to. Oh, yeah. Like whether it's a punch or a kick or a turn or a... I would do this as a primer before I would go and spar or hit the bag or something like that. Wow, yeah. that's a nice tip. Mm -hmm. This is where you have to control the movement, especially with the U-belt, because it's going all over the place. Mm -hmm. So you can't explode through this movement. It has to be controlled. You have to squeeze, you have to maintain your stability. I want to try the other side to see if there's something wrong with that one. Yep. That was yep. really off balance. Yeah, bring them see the it's, difference? It's down. Yeah, it's, it's because the other side was like, Falling out. I couldn't. I could barely do it. Like I was just like fighting it the whole time. You know? If you look at our assessment, he he he's more lateralized to that right side, which causes more internal rotation on this side, which makes it easier for him to do it. We're all unilateral, unbalanced for the most part, mm -hmm. and, you know. So you just kind of want to bring up the weakness up to a point where it's you know more acceptable instead of a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. Everybody should probably be doing these, <laughs> even powerlifters. Mm -hmm. You know, strongman competitors. Everybody can benefit from these particular exercises, right? What is bottoms up kettlebell armbar? Because I don't understand what a bottom up bottoms up kettlebell is. It's popular for arm wrestling. You want me to armbar your foot? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness. I still had a long way to go. And then you're just, you can go from here, right? Internal, external rotation of the shoulder. Underneath. Up. The stretch the part? Yep. Then reach. There you go. Turn the palm down. The palm on the hand. On the hand. Yep, now reach back more. Keep creeping. Now bring this knee down. This all one. the way to the floor. Yep. yep. Keep going. Look up after you go. Take this leg out. Slide and then slide your hip down as far as you can. Mm -hmm. Not your knee. Just slide your hip down. This way. This uh. way. This way. This way. This way. Good. Right there. Get this knee up a little bit. Good. Just look at it. Now just give me internal external rotation of the shoulder. There you go. There you go. Do five reps five to six reps there, and then roll back, and then you do three total rounds through. I like this. Yeah, this feels like something that, I, that my body likes to do. <laughs> now you don't have to go bottoms up. You could just go regular kettlebell armbar. Yeah. But the bottoms up also helps with grip strength, right? So then it also can help with the radiation, which, mm -hmm. causes, which helps with stabilizing everything from the fist all the way through the body. When we coil, it's just basically making sure that we're tightening up and using that anchor point to blast off of, right? So I'll show you real quick. Mm -hmm. you come here. So you can go into a bilateral stance. We like to internally rotate the feet or the femurs. And then from here, I'm gonna go ahead, take the, the, the barbell, and I'm gonna go ahead and coil into my hip. So now I'm tightening everything up here. And as you see, if I lift my hip just like we did on the wall, I'm compressing everything down in order for me to blast out of it. Almost like I'm, I'm like, like compressing a spring so I can blast out. Mm -hmm. So here, and then I wanna get a slight lean because I'm gonna go more at a 45 degree angle. And then from there, I'm gonna punch up 
and then switch my foot forward. Boom. Now I'm going from compression here to, to compression here. Yeah. So when I go through a punch, it's the same concept. And anybody who's ever thrown a punch, you know, and if you look at Mike Tyson, he was always offline when he threw his punches to create a lot of power and also to not get hit. And Mike Tyson obviously was knocking a lot of people out. He would come hard on his punches here. That's a change of plan with the oh, wow. and the left hook. They were all offline, but he was throwing his entire weight into his punches. We're gonna be here, the coil, punch. And just step through, let's try. Okay. Bring that knee out slightly. This one? Yep, there you go. Then from there, you're gonna step with the opposite leg and punch through. The right leg. Yep. Good. Good. Bring your hip more towards your elbow. Good, right there. Now, go. There you go. Good. Do it again. Instead of going like, because you're doing that. Yeah. I need you to do that. Okay. Push it more towards that side. Yeah, there you go. Punch it. Yeah, there you go. See how all that correlates. Now, when you go to rotate, you need to use the serratus too and press forward and protract. Is this right? No. Hit. Push, hit more towards the elbow. Uh, the elbow. Yep. A little bit more. No, the other way. There you go. Now hit it. Better. Okay. Better. Ah. This shouldn't be loose at that end range. Like again, you should be able to like wind it up. Yeah. And then let it go. Okay. Right? Any strike whatsoever, you need to be able to contract, relax, contract, relax as fast as possible. So I need to be able to be loose, contract to throw, relax it till it gets to the end point, and then contract again. So that's the technical portion of technical. training this. Yeah. So you have all these pieces you put together mm -hmm. to create, you know, basically the recipe for it. And then you just install the software, which is having a coach like you cue you on, you know, yeah. when to. So the great thing about, you know, me being in the sport for so long as a fighter and now coaching and then also understanding the biomechanics towards it and then what I need to do to enhance their biomechanics. I can look at a, I can look at a fighter's range of motion. I can look at a fighter's rotational torque. If I don't see them in a proper position or they're not firing muscles efficiently, I know that they're leaking force and I put it, they're taking it off the table. Yeah. So we will use some sort of general, general movements or exercises to enhance their specificity. If people want to train with you, do you offer like training? Usually at one-on-one -on -one online. So you can go ahead and check out my website, garushron.com. If you ever did want to reach out, we can do some consulting. And then you also do uh, speaking seminars as well. Yep, yep. Fill at garushron.com and we'll get it done.